Thanks for coming to this session. My name is Scott Stalker. I'm from the Office of University Communications, and I'm going to be talking about the Stanford event calendar and a redesign project that um, I've been working on. And this is a great follow on to the previous session that was just in this room. How many of you were just here for the decanter session? So most, most of you were here. So um, this is a nice follow on to the um, presentation that we just had about the decanter um, design library and uh, code base because I used that to build a new version of the Stanford event calendar. Um, and I'll be talking about that a little more in the presentation. Um, so it's just a little bit of background. Um, Stanford events, the site is events.stanford.edu, is the uh, main university event calendar for the whole campus. So it's open to any unit on campus to post their um, events. It's primarily public public events, but there are also options for posting events that are just meant for internal community. Um, we initially launched it in 2003, so it's a very long running application. Um, and it's a homegrown application that um, I wrote uh, way back then and is still um, chugging along. So I my subtitle on the website for this um, presentation was breathing new life into an old application. So um, the back end um, is still, um, it's evolved a lot over these years, of course, but it's still much um, uh, the same as it was when it first started. It's a Java JSP application with a MySQL database. Um, the front end, when it was initially built up until now, um, the back end um, produces XML, so it's XML based, and I use um, XSLT to generate um, H the HTML front end that users see when they visit the calendar. Um, that's changing with this redesign. So I'm mostly gonna be focusing today on the, the front end design of the site. Um, so the visual design of the event calendar has over all of these years tracked the stanford.edu home site, which is also a site that um, our team in University Communications produces. So um, back in 2003, when the event calendar first launched, this is what it looked like. Um, that was using a, a temp, it was not, not responsive design. It was a template that matched what the homepage looked like back then, um, old, our old uh, university logo and very small typography. Um, in 2008, um, following a homepage redesign in 2007, we redesigned the event calendar in um, a template back then we called Stanford Modern. For those of you who probably remember that template, again, not responsive design. Um, and then in 2013, following another redesign of the home site, um, we introduced the new, um, this is the first responsive design of the calendar. We're using Bootstrap 3. Um, this is a templating system that was codenamed Cardinal, which is still in use today. Um, but now, um, nearing the end of its life as we're rolling out all of these new tools and design the new um, decanter design library. Um, so that's kind of where, where we've come from. Um, and I'll just also just say this last shot of the 2013 site, while the calendars had some feature changes, this is pretty much what the uh, event calendar looks like today. So this um, redesign project that I've been working on recently um, is to track, again, the um, homepage um, redesign that happened in 2000, late 2017. Um, we're utilizing um, the decanter pattern library, which is uh, visually based a lot on the current stanford.edu website. And um, I'm replacing Bootstrap, which was the grid and layout system that has, was in use in the current event calendar with decanter's new um, CSS grid and Flexbox based framework. And um, the 
as I mentioned, um, up until now, the front end of the site has been generated HTML um, from XML files, and that is being replaced now with um, a PHP front end, which is going to give us a lot more um, opportunities moving forward to add some customized, customizable and personalization features for the front end of the site. So I'm hoping as we move forward to add features like allowing users to bookmark events, um, to sh share events um, more easily, um, and um, better search options and things like that, which we can now do by having a code-based front end of the site rather than just static HTML files. Also, for example, maybe saving um, preferences for the types of events you're interested in. So, slides to advance. So, um, the first step of this redesign was the visual um, redesign of the uh, rescanning of the site. And um, as I meant, um, as was discussed in the previous session about Decanter, um, where we have a pattern library that's housed in Figma which is a really amazing design tool. If any of you have used Sketch before, um, it's similar in concept to Sketch, but it's um, entirely, uh, can be used through a web browser. There's also a desktop application, but it's really designed to be collaborative so um, people can share assets. Um, there, we have now have a um, shared Stanford um, decanter pattern library, and I love that I could just pull in um, cards and the brand bar and the footer from that, um, as Carrie demonstrated in the last session for those of you who are here. And it made um, the design work on this project go very quickly um, relative to any other project I've worked on, I would say. Um, John Holloman, who was our designer, did all of this design work in Figma. So he utilized the decanter pattern library and created high fidelity mockups of all of the pages of the event calendar um, at all the breakpoints. So I had a really clear guide for implementing the code um, and it made it very easy for us to iterate as we were, as I started to work on the code and things needed to be tweaked a little bit. Um, it was very easy for him to go in and, and um, iterate on the design. Um, so this is just a screenshot of what the Figma mockups um, and for the event calendar look like um, that John had created. So as I mentioned, um, the implementation is of the front end of this is based over the decanter pattern library. Um, it was a really exciting, I, the work on this started in late February and I would say the very, at the very beginning, within an hour, um, I had the framework of a page up. It was an exciting point for all of us who have been working on Decanter, I think. Um, within just an hour, I had the Stanford brand bar, the universal footer, and the basic layout of the page and the lockup for the site implemented um, and deployed on my development server. Um, with um, only using the Decanter mix-ins and not having to write really a even a line of custom CSS code. So that was pretty exciting. And um, the, as I mentioned, started working on this in um, late February and um, I'm at the end of the project right now. So um, it's been a pretty quick development time for one, one person working on it. And with a lot of help from Yvonne <laughs> on the front end code, yeah. So with that, I um, want to do a little demo. If I can get out of here. So again, this is what the event calendar. Um, what happened? I pulled that out. Of, um, I think I'm not sharing this anymore, though. Let me do. Sorry about that. I, Accidentally need to get it back into here. Okay. I'm hoping people on Zoom can see this too. But this is the let's move up a little bit. 
This is what the event calendar currently looks like. So just a quick look at what the drop down navigation looks like. It has a, it's a sidebar um, responsive design. This is what a event detail page looks like. And um, I'll do a quick show of kind of the responsive design of the site. And this is, a, again, as I mentioned, this was a bootstrap based um, template that we codenamed Cardinal, um, which has also been available um, in WordPress, and I think for um, maybe in Drupal too. And then here is the um, new version of the event calendar. So um, we've dropped this, dropped the sidebar from it. Um, so it's a, it's a one column design. Um, the navigation, even though it looks quite different from the, the navigation um, pattern in decanter is actually using that decanter um, main navigation code base just with some styling changes and a little bit of customization. Um, the drop downs are utilizing the same um, um, right out of the box drop down navigation from Decanter. One element that we added was um, embedding a date picker into the navigation. So this is how you can search the calendar by, by date. Um, the data, and this is our, the, my development site, so the data is a little bit stale, but um, then I will show you an event detail page. So this is, let me pick a better one. So this is the event detail page. Um, and if, do the responsive design. It really looks, it looks, um, I think, very sharp on, on mobile phones, so. And what the menu looks like at the different breakpoints is also, um, again, all of this work on what the, what the menu would look like in the different breakpoints was done in Figma ahead of time. So I had a really clear guide to, for the implementation. Yeah. So that's a quick little demo of what the new site looks like. Um, go back in here. So I'm happy to answer any questions anyone has about the development um, process. So the the calendar, yeah, so it's, it's a homegrown Java application. Um, so it's written in Java and JSP with a MySQL, um, MySQL database. Um, one thing I will also, let me go back and show you. Um, so kind of at the core of the, of the web application, is, um, is a XML feed service. And this, is, um, this has been the core of the application from the beginning, but it's proved to be a really, it was a really good um, structure for this. It almost operates in a headless environment. So the front end of the site that users see is detached from the back end web application. Um, the web application only generates these um, XML data files for all of the events, all of the listing, listings of events. Um, and then that, um, as I mentioned now, is being transformed through an XML um, templating uh, process called XSLT to generate the front end pages. Now we're moving that into um, PHP. But these XML files have been actually also been used now across campus um, there's a Drupal module available on campus called the Drupal Events Importer that a lot of departments are using. 
and they can pull these feeds um, and pull events into their own websites. So um, that's all documented at events.cmpr.edu slash XML. But here's just an example of what a, what a feed looks like. Of a, this is the featured events listing page. Um, so it's a, just structured data that's getting generated from that backend web application. Um, there's documentation on this site about what the structure of the XML feeds is. But you can't read that very well on the screen share. Um, and then I also have some examples of how to use the feeds with um, PHP or with XSLT. And this PHP, um, and can't really read that. <laughs> um, but it's just a little, um, it's using simple XML, the simple XML PHP library. I uh, have a process to just parse that feed document and then you can um, iterate over that with PHP um, object, creating a PHP object out of it. And it um, makes all of the data available in array, in a object array um, so you can go through the nested structure of the object. And that's what I did for the, the new front end is all just PHP code that reads those XML feed files and generates the pages of the site. Any other questions? So question from JB, when will this launch? I planted her in the audience. Um, so it's actually the new site is launching this afternoon. So, um, yeah. <laughs> um, after I leave webcamp, I'm going to go back and flip the switch. Um, so I think by around four or five o'clock this afternoon, it should be live. So take your last look at the existing web calendar while, on your lunch break, and then it's going to be gone. <laughs> Forrest? Yeah. Yeah, so question about um, some of the other feed options like iCal and RSS. Was that what you were, yeah. Um, so we do, the backend web application also um, produces iCal files and RSS files for all of the listing pages. Um, so users, front end users can subscribe to those using um, one of those formats. Um, we really encourage for people on campus who want to um, consume this data to use the XML feeds rather than iCal because it's a much richer data set, um, includes things that you, you really can't include in um, iCal. The more rich um, things like the tagging um, category and, and subject tagging and um, an image, I'm not even sure if iCal supports an image file. I don't know that our iCal feed has the image in it. Um, but, and then, and there's, um, yes, the um, XML feed for repeating events also contains um, nested um, XML elements for each of the repeating dates and times that they start. So you really can get very fine grain um, repeat information. Or as in the case of the Drupal importer module where the Drupal site um, isn't really on, the, this is for mostly for the web services um, Drupal platform, the Jumpstart service. Um, it doesn't really, their calendar module or their calendar feature doesn't really support repeating dates. Um, so we have a separate, um, feed service that's based on the, the main feed service for that, that actually breaks out repeating dates into individual events. So they'll show up on those calendars as individual events. And all of that you wouldn't get, of 
from an iCal feed or, a, or the RSS feed. So. And then on the, Forrest also asked about the, the design process. Um, so um, we heavily relied on a lot of, um, because we were using the design patterns from um, the Decanter project, um, John Holloman, who's our designer, did some user, um, light user testing, usability studies on the pattern libraries. So the navigation, um, the cards, um, and he used a tool, I know for part of that process called UserBob um, to do some A-B testing of some different layouts. Um, and because I was leveraging for this and John and the design was leveraging a lot of those patterns from Decanter, we relied mostly on that user research. Um, he did, we did just some very light um, kind of discussion-based user um, feedback on the, on the overall design from the event calendar, mainly around the navigation, I would say. So that was a pretty light process. But I really feel because we were leveraging the decanter pattern library, we had some very solid um, design patterns baked into it. Well, I'm happy to answer other questions or can have, people can have a little bit longer break before, well, I guess lunch is next. So, um, check out the new site this afternoon. And thanks, if you've come up with any other uh, questions, I'm happy to answer. You can uh, reach me at email too. So thanks very much.